National Training and Development Curriculum for Foster and Adoptive Parents. Life is a series of transitions. Some transitions are joyful and exciting, while others can be challenging. Children who have been removed from their parents through the child welfare system or separated from their parents through adoption have experienced a transition that impacts their short and long-term well-being. In the following segments, professionals in the fields of foster care and adoption will provide insight into how placement transitions impact youth in care and strategies that can help to make these transitions less traumatic and disruptive for the child. You'll also meet Phyllis and Eldon Hackman, who share how they help children in their care feel welcomed and connected before, during, and after placement transitions. Placement transitions impact all aspects of a child's life, including emotional, educational, relational, and physical. Denise Goodman, LISW, trainer, child welfare consultant. Moving from one place to another is hard for kids in general, because you change school, you change friends, you change parents, you change family. Foster and adoptive parents can have different roles in a placement transition. They might be preparing to receive a child from a foster home, group home, hospital, shelter, or juvenile facility, helping a child transition to another foster home, the home of a relative, an adoptive home, or, in the best cases, back to their parents, or caring for children who are removed from their parents or must leave a placement unexpectedly, often due to an emergency or dangerous situation. I think in working on a transition and in being thoughtful of that journey for all the parties involved, I really believe we should start with lead, a planning meeting to sit down and just talk about a meet and greet to get to know each other and to talk about, you know, what each is concerned about, what each needs to be able to make this go well. If a child is coming into your care, planning and preparation are key. Reaching out to a child's caseworker can provide more detailed information about the child's history and needs. There may also be adults who are important in the child's life who can offer additional information and even stay connected to the child. Robin Harvey, foster and adoptive parent. We'd often meet with the caseworkers when they were open to that and give us additional information of their history, their school needs, you know, all those little details that can make or break a placement. Christina Brackett, clinical director for residential services, Plummer Youth Promise. Before they move into the home, if there are people that are connected to this young person, like you know, a grandmother they see sometimes, or an aunt they talk to, or a teacher, whoever, getting to know that person and trying to kind of team up with them, I think is so important for the kids to see that their sort of old life and their new life are sort of integrated, and all these adults are kind of in it together, and they all want what's best for the kid. If there are other children in the home, include them in the process. When we accepted children into our home, oftentimes we had a meeting with the, the whole family. And we just said, like, we have an opportunity to take this kid. This is what I know about him. This is what I can tell you about him. We really had to listen to our kids because for us, we're not foster parents. We're a foster family. Each one of us in our family has um, some responsibility. For planned placements, Pre-placement visits can help the child feel more at ease with the transition. Phyllis and Eldon Hackman, foster parents. We like to try to have a pre-visit with the kids before they move in with us. Kind of show them the room that they'd be staying in, show them downstairs living area that the kids have, which is just a little TV and gaming room. If a child is transitioning from residential care and can't visit, it can be helpful to visit them at the residential facility. I think having practice with the child before they move into the home is really important. So getting to know each other while you have a lot of support from the program and the social worker. Learn about that young person, whether it's from the staff or being involved in the therapeutic interventions the child is experiencing, but also to get a sense of the environment. We've had some youth who've gone to foster homes who prior to that happening, the foster parent was coming to all their treatment meetings here at the program. They were doing any of those kind of parental tasks, like taking them to medical appointments, taking them to go clothing shopping, like all those normal things a parent would do, we're doing them ahead of time so that they are developing that relationship. Creating a photo album can help familiarize the child with the new environment before the transition. 
Now it's so easy. I can take pictures. I can upload them. I can print them out. Here's your room. Here's your yard. Here's our dog. You know, here's the other kids in the home. Here's the school you'll attend. So kind of like, you know, a little pre -placed, virtual pre-placement visit in the community neighborhood. That way the kid feels like they're selecting us versus us, you know, saying it's okay for you to come and live with us. Planned transitions allow for extra measures of preparation, like including the child in the timing of the transition. I think certainly having the young person there is incredibly important because they'll be able to say, oh, I, I don't want to leave until after the prom. And so all those things matter when you're a teenager. It could be that if I'm a younger child, oh, that's my Girl Scout sleepaway weekend. If it's a planned transition, I really try to make it during a time where the child can stay a bit like, if it's Christmas break coming up, we'll do a, a transition, you know, after the holidays. Thoughtful preparation can ensure children joining your family will feel welcome and connected. I do think it's important for kids coming to a new family that you don't have 7,000 of your closest relatives over the first day. Keep move-in day small. It's pretty overwhelming and that you build in some time for the young person to kind of chill out a little bit. One thing that eases the kids in, we ask them to talk about the foods they like and the foods they don't like, what are some of their favorite dishes. In the Hackman home, Phyllis and Eldon make a special meal for a new child on the first night. That's a good way for us is to start off on a good foot with them. Like a lot of kids will say, I just like pizza or I just like cheeseburgers or whatever. And I'm say, well, we can have pizza tonight. So if a kid said, hey, you know, I love Cocoa Puffs, then we would make sure that we had Cocoa Puffs in the house when they arrived because it was a feeling of familiarity and warmth. And it was, it was just a gesture to say, we see you. Ask about other preferences too. Would you rather have white milk? talking to the youth about those like little nitty gritty things about like how do you get like to get woken up in the morning. We work really hard to try to make sure um, you know when addressing clothing and personal items and stuff that we let them be a part of that. If they need within reason a certain type of uh, clothes you know we're gonna make sure that they feel like they fit in with the kids that they're going to school with. I like to let my kids decorate their rooms. I like to say hey you know in a couple weeks what color would you like to paint this room? You know do we want to grab a new bedspread? Showing interest in their hobbies is another way to create a welcoming environment. Find out their hobbies and their interests. We have two or three guitars around here because we've had kids come in, oh, I want to play the guitar. Another thing that my husband and I are really committed to doing is putting pictures of family in our house. So we have a wall of kids, and as soon as a kid gets there, their picture goes up on the wall. As a child adjusts to their new environment, a few strategies can help set them up for success. Once children have become acclimated to the house, having a conversation with them about things like curfew, safety, chores, and routines can help the child know what's expected of them. Lightly go through a little bit of uh, accountability and the home rules and have them, you know, chit chat with the other kids about that. I'll get into the fine tune rules in a day or so, but recognizing that this kid's coming from a completely different environment than I've been running my home. It's important to be respectful of the belongings that a child brings with them too. Early on in my fostering career, I had a little girl and she brought this blanket and I, in my head, called it the roadkill blanket because it stunk so, so bad. So I washed it and I gave it to her that, that night and I was all proud of myself. Oh, I washed your blanket, sweetheart. It smells so good, it's, it's so soft. And she started to cry and I'm like, what's wrong? You know, what, what happened? And she said, it doesn't smell like my dad anymore. And right there was like a gut punch to me that I had taken away something so precious from her because it was distasteful to me. And from that point on, now I ask permission for everything. A few other strategies may be helpful during the transition. Be flexible with routines for the first few days. Look for signs of distress or changes in behavior to identify potential triggers. Provide clothing, personal supplies, and toys as needed, but don't overwhelm the child with gifts and toys. If there are other children in the home, check in to see how they are adjusting. Not all placements are planned. Emergency placements, especially if it's a child's first experience in the child welfare system, should be approached with extra care. If it's their initial placement, this could be the worst day they've ever had in their life. Part of my welcoming is just getting to know that child and letting them know 
that I'm, I'm there for them, that I'm sad for them too, that I see their hurt, and, and helping them to, to understand that I don't have any expectations right yet. There may be times when a child in your care transitions out due to reunification, adoption, or moving to another living situation. When a foster parent becomes aware that a placement or a placement move is impending, that obviously the first thing to do is to start talking to the child about this and to be able to, to encourage the child, to answer the child's questions the best they can. Always check with your caseworker before discussing upcoming moves with a child or contacting the next family. If possible, reach out to the next family and establish a relationship. I think reaching out to the next family is critical. I want to be able to share to the family who's receiving my child about their allergies, their habits, their likes, dislikes. Discuss the child's routine and preferences with future caregivers. To further reduce stress, plan the logistics early. What are the loose ends that need to get wrapped up for this child in their former home? Do they need to have something at school done for them? Do we need to include an extended family member who's been involved with this child who will continue to be involved with this child, like the grandma or the auntie or the older sibling who's emancipated and is out on their own? A casual conversation after a pre-placement visit can provide clues about the child's readiness to move. When kids come back, I want to be encouraging. How did it go? What did you enjoy? And to begin to get a sense of, you know, where is that child in terms of wrapping their head around this move? Because that's important for me to inform the worker. Needs a little more time. Or it looks like he's ready to go because he left half his clothes there. It's important to remember that all transitions, both planned and unplanned, are intertwined with loss. Loss is one of the only constants that you're going to get in foster care. Everybody experiences loss. Making sure they know, okay, um, you're having to leave, but it's not because we want you to leave. It's, you know, something that the courts have decided or mom or dad put in the work and, you know, you're going home and I know you're happy about that. As a foster parent, we used to have the goodbye dinner. We would give gag gifts. We would tell stories about them. We would give them pictures that they could have. So while it was kind of hard to see kids go, we knew it was the best thing, and we wanted to make them feel that, yes, we love you, we care about you, we're never going to forget you. Limiting the number of placements that a child has to experience is critical. How do we reduce placement disruptions? We don't take kids that are so far over the level of our skill that we can't, we can't foster them. Uh, it's okay to step out of your box a little bit, but when we're talking about a life-changing transition, it's best to have the skill before you go in. So if I'm a foster parent and I'm exasperated and I call and say, take this kid, think about what that child's experience. Here's another family that doesn't love me, that doesn't want me. No matter what the circumstances, when a child does transition out of your home, Remember to take extra care of yourself and reach out to your support system. When the placement ends, nobody checks on you. You lose the caseworker, you lose the family, you lose the kid, and you're just sitting there like, now what? And I think that setting yourself up for success requires getting a supportive network. For me as a parent who the child is leaving, I have to remember that's a loss for me too. I need to make sure that my schedule is good for self-care. That's talking with my foster girlfriends. That might be me seeking out my therapist and saying I'm having these deep feelings. When possible, try to maintain some type of connection with the child. The few kids I did transition out, I'm proud to say that I still have a relationship with them. Just because we can't live together for whatever reason doesn't mean the relationship has to be broken, and it certainly doesn't mean that I can't still be a part of that child's support network. My goal is to when they leave here to be in a better place than when they came in. And know if they struggle that all they gotta do is pick up the yep. phone. Yep. I don't really believe that children can have too many adults that love them. That's the whole thing. Make sure the kids know they matter. This video was funded by the Children's Bureau, Administration on Children, Youth, and Families. Administration for Children and Families, U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, under grant number 90C01134. The contents of this video are solely the responsibility of the authors and do not necessarily represent the official views of the Children's Bureau.